Mr. Trump has been a very vocal critic of you and your colleagues, recently calling you boneheads, and just now has called you a terrible communicator. How do you respond to these criticisms and any regrets to have this many press conferences? I don't. Um, uh, I'm not going to change my practice here today of, of uh, not re responding to comments or addressing comments made by elected officials. I will just say uh, that um, I continue to believe that the independence of the Federal Reserve from direct political control has served the public well over time. And I assure you that my co colleagues and I will continue to conduct monetary policy without regard to political considerations. We're going to use our best judgment based on facts, evidence, and objective analysis in it, pursuing our goals. And uh, that's what I have to say on that. Brian? <clears throat> Hi, Chairman Powell. Uh, Brian Chung with Yahoo Finance. Thanks for taking my question. Um, as we saw with falling yields, at least up until the beginning of this month, um, there's been a lot of demand for U.S. Treasuries, and even that was partly maybe to blame for the liquidity crunch in repo markets that we saw. This week, I mean, does the Fed have concerns over the impacts of a global glut for U.S. debt? Is that a conversation that you also have uh, with Treasury Secretary Mnuchin about what the proper way to maybe address some of the challenges down the road with uh, that type of kind of heavy interest globally? Not really, no. That's really that's really Treasury's job and Congress's job in terms of well, there's how much to spend and how big the deficits are, and and there's how to finance it, and you know none of that really calls for advice from the Fed. We take. We take fiscal policy pretty much as exogenous to our work. Now, that doesn't stop, stop us from time to time from saying that we think it's important that the U.S. Uh, fiscal picture return to a sustainable footing. And, you know, right now it's not. That's been the case for a long time. And uh, that's something we will have to address. And, and a good time to do it is when the economy is strong. So we limit ourselves to high-level statements like that. Uh, hi, Heather Long from The Washington Post. Um, Mr. Chairman, in, in your view, is there any risk to the United States having much higher interest rates than Europe and Japan and other parts of the world? Is there any risk to the U.S. economy to that divergence or any risk to the global economy? Yeah, so I'd, I guess I would say it this way. Um, uh, it's global capital markets are highly integrated and, um, you know, our rates are our long rates are definitely being pulled down by the very, very low rates uh, that are abroad. And, you know, the way I would characterize it is this, that low rates abroad are a symbol or a sign, rather, of, of weak global growth, expectations of low inflation, low, low growth, and, 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 you know, just kind of a lack of uh, policy space to move against uh, or, or ideas about how to break out of that low equilibrium. Now, that has implications for us. You know, we in, in a world where where economies and financial markets are, are tightly integrated, that matters for the U.S. economy. So that's going to pull down U.S. rates, and and U.S. financial conditions can tighten uh, because of that. And so I think we, we we put all all of that goes into our into our thinking and into our models. We do understand how the you know how the international sector interfaces with the U.S. economy. We take that into account in in setting our interest rate policy.